How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another leak code question. Today our question is from Google and our question is called Maximum Depth of Binary Trade. Okay guys, so our question is from Google today. Our problem description says, given a binary tree, find its maximum depth. The maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from the root node down to the farthest leaf, leaf node. And note, a leaf is a node with no children. So if we're given this example here, given binary tree 3, 9, 20, null, null, 5, uh, 15, 7, this is what our tree looks like, we would just return the depth of 3. And the reason for that is we have 3 nodes along our maximum path, basically. So again, it's just finding the maximum depth. 3 would be the first depth or the first level, 20 would be the second level, 7 would be the third level, and therefore we would return the number 3, meaning 3 is the maximum depth. So our problem description is pretty simple. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but I think that this is a really good question to go over to try and grapple with and understand recursion and really how it works. And so I kind of wanted to give a little bit of an analogy today, but so for this problem, I like to think about recursion in this case as kind of like sitting in a movie theater. And so let's say you go with a, you know, go to see a movie with your friends or in my case, you know, totally alone. Um, and let's say you're just like sitting in some row in the middle of the movie theater, but you don't know how close you are to the screen. Um, the only thing you really do know in your case is that you're one behind the person in front of you. And I know this sounds really random and I know it sounds like it's not gonna be helpful, but give me a second and I really think it'll make sense. So it's kind of similar to this tree, right? We don't really know where we are in this tree. We don't know where it ends necessarily, but all we know is that we're currently at some level plus one. And so what we could basically do with our recursion is we can constantly just ask, like we would in a movie theater, uh, we could ask people to kind of understand where we are in this movie theater. So what we can do is we can actually just tap the person in front of us and say, hey, what row are you in? And the person in front of us might not be in the first row, right? But they can kind of tell us, oh, you know, I'm not sure, let me ask the person in front of me. And so that chain can kind of continue. The person can keep asking the person in front of them, what row are you in? And eventually we'll actually get to the person in the first row. And that's when the person knows what row they're in, right? So the person in the first row has no one in front of them. So therefore they know that they're in the first row. So that's our base case, right? Our base case is always the thing that we know, the thing that we understand. It's when we know the answers of the problem. So let's say we're, you know, in the middle of the movie theater, we keep asking what row are you in? Eventually we get to the first person. The first person says, oh, I'm in the first row. And they turn, you know, they're talking to the second person. And then the second person understands, okay, I'm in the second row. And they could turn around and tell the person in the third row, I'm in the second row. So the person in the third row knows that they're in the second row plus one, therefore the third row. And so that will trickle all the way back to us and then that we'll know that we're in maybe the 15th row, right? Because the, the person in the 14th row will tell us they're in 14, and we'll just add one because we're one row behind them. So I hope that made sense. Probably sounds a little bit silly, but I think it's a good way to kind of grapple with uh, recursion and kind of try and understand what's going on. So the whole point of that example is we can kind of do the same thing. We're going to start at some point in the tree, which is basically the root that we're given the reference to here. And we can kind of just keep asking that question, right? So we have some base case, which is when we get to the very bottom of the tree where the leaf node, it's the leaf node's children, right? Where it's null. And we would know that we're actually at depth zero, right? Kind of like the person in the first row of the movie theater. They're in row one, and we know that we're at maximum at the depth zero when we're on a null node. So that could be our base case. And otherwise, what we want to do if we're not at that base case, we just wanna explore our left and right child and basically ask the same question, right? Tapping the person in front of us. What row are you in? We're asking those nodes, right? The left child and the right child, what depth are you at? And so we can keep asking that question. Eventually we'll get to that base case and then we'll just add back, 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 back all the way to whatever case we were at. And then we just have to add one to include ourself, right? The current node. So I know that's, Kind of a strange explanation, but hopefully it makes sense. And hopefully when we write this code, it'll make more sense. But so let's just do the base case, right? So we said, if we're at a null node, we know that we're at a zeroth depth, right? So we're actually, it's kind of backwards, but we're starting from the very bottom. So if we get all the way down the tree, we're gonna say we're at the zeroth depth, and then we're gonna constantly add levels and bubble back up. So if the root is null, we're gonna return zero. 
Now, otherwise, if we're not at the base case, we want to, we said we want to ask that question, right? What level are you at? And we're going to ask our children, our left child and our right child. So we're going to say int left equals, and this is where our recursive calls it, comes in. So we're going to ask the same question. So we're calling the function again, except we're going to call it on the left child. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, but just for the right child. So int right equals max depth of root dot right. And now all we need to do is we need to take the maximum, right? Because we care about the maximum. So this is where everything is bubbled back up to us. We know what row we're in and we just need to add one, right? So it's the same sort of deal with the tree. We're just gonna say, hey, you know, how deep is your left, your left uh, subtree, right? So how deep is our left subtree? How deep is our right subtree? And once we know that, we just wanna take the maximum of either of them, sorry, the maximum from them, right? Whichever one is bigger. And then we wanna add one because we're actually one level higher than our children. So we're really just gonna say return math.max of our left, of our right, and then we're gonna add one because we're right above them, right? The same way in the movie theater, we're right behind the other person. So hopefully that this makes sense, guys. Um, I would say that the runtime here is probably going to be, let's think about this. So we're going all the way down through the depth of the tree. We're gonna traverse every child. So I think that really the runtime is O of N just because we're gonna explore uh, as deep as we can and we're always gonna check the left and right child of each node. So I would say that the runtime is O of N where we're just traversing the entire tree. So let's run this code and make sure that it works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve max depth of binary tree in Java. Again, this is a question that's asked by Google. If you guys have any questions for me, be sure to leave them in the comments. I hope that that analogy was clear. If it wasn't, be sure to let me know and I'll try and be better in the future. Otherwise, if you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm not gonna lie,